Welcome back to the Tigerium Hangout. This is Mike. I'm coming at you with another video. And this time, I want to talk to you about the pluses and the minuses of Takara's plus line. So, there's been a lot of debate about whether or not Takara should be reissuing their figures with repaints and calling it the plus line. And so, for us to really discuss this in depth and have a good conversation about this, we really have to start at the beginning. So, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Wait, we don't have to go back that far. Let's go to 1984. In 1984, Hasbro, with the help of Takara, brought over to the United States a toy line, multiple toy lines, converged them into Transformers. They made a cartoon based off of that, and they actually, Hasbro didn't make it, they had someone else make it for them. And the cartoon was based on the toys. Now, the toys themselves were kind of bricks and there was very few that would actually have any articulation and look great but the toys really inspired this cartoon and to sell those toys the cartoon characters were made to look bigger and larger than life which the life is the toy and the larger than life is the persona on the screen so flash forward about 20 years from there and we're sitting um, in the early 2000s we have well, according to the movie 2005. <laughs> now, around 2002, 2003, we start seeing some Masterpiece show. Now, Masterpiece figures from Takara were based on the cartoon. So, the toy inspired the cartoon. The cartoon inspires now Masterpiece line of toys. This Masterpiece line of toys had a real-world aesthetic to them. And you look at the MP01, uh, the Prime, uh, the Megatron, the early Seekers, which is Seekers still, I guess. And all of those figures have this real world feel to him as how could you say a grimlock has a real world feel he has a real world feel the reality is though somewhere takara flips a switch and starts going ultra tune hyper tune the first figure i felt was hyper tune was in 2011 with the mp09 now this figure i thought it was a tune accurate but the discussion on this one is that the 1986 animated movie brought about these forms that weren't transforming into actual real-world Earth vehicles. Therefore, they kind of already are a tune-inspired kind of thing. And so so that's, that's why that argument kind of doesn't stick. So what people usually try to say is that it actually started when it got to the MP27 Ironhide. And Ironhide, and then, of course, uh, Ratchet based off the same mold, and then moving into Inferno, and all of that stuff. So... So that's why people say Ironhide really started the tune accurate uh, thing there. And then, of course, uh, I, I we've got the uh, Ultra Magnus looks very tune accurate, too. But see, Ultra Magnus still has a lot of line detail as to where the Ironhide kind of loses a lot of it. And it depends on what side of this debate you are on. We're going to talk about a few things, and we're going to talk about the pluses and the minuses. Now, one thing I want to say... We're going to start with the minuses because there's so much negative I hear out there about it. And with that, I want to point out that Make Toys is following suit with their Seekers. And there's a couple of other uh, releases. I, I would even say that pretty much all the movie stuff, none of that's really affected, in my opinion. Because the movie stuff is already just looks hyper -tuned. So you're talking about Cyclonuses, the, uh, the, uh, the sweeps... Um, the, you know, the, the RCs, the cups, and those, I think that those already look kind of like that. I mean, KFC's transistor would fall into maybe real-world aesthetic of a boombox. I don't know. But, but you're looking at that. Let's look at the minuses. So minus number one, having to rebuy the figures. This is the biggest complaint that I get, is that people defend the figure they have to the, to the day that they die. Now, now, I have to admit, ultimately and truly and bluely, a lot of people do like the first... The real world aesthetic and i understand that but i think that there's a little bit of everybody that defends them to an extreme just doesn't want to rebuy new ones i see that there's some ko's of a couple of these that pop up saying they're ko's but i really think the factory seconds and i think that we'll go through that supply pretty quick i don't think they'll be hanging around five years later that's my belief so rebuying the figures and obviously you know no one really wants to do that the next thing is they don't match the established shelf. So like you're looking at this hyper tune set of figures and then put them next to say your Soundwave or you put them next to say um, 
you, well, your Dinobots or some of the other figures that just third party and uh, Takara alike. And it's like, well, you know, they don't match my, my shelf in the way it's already going. And so I can see that. And I can understand that point. And so, so with that, you know, you've got a, an established aesthetic that you have going on in your display. You've put a lot of money into that display. So I really understand that that's very valid. And that's, that's, I think, the biggest reason people are, uh, are negative and sour on the tune look. And, and switching. I'm still upset they switched from a 12-inch to a 9-inch scale. But I seem to be the only one that's concerned about that. But anyway, moving on past that. Number three in my minuses. There's a two-tune. It's, it's too hyper-tune to a detriment. And to a detriment of... Uh, you look at Inferno. And if I compare Inferno to uh, Grapple. But I take... The Make Toys Grapple. I like the waist of the Make Toys Grapple better than the waist on the the, the Takara Inferno. And I gotta tell you, the Takara Inferno matched that aesthetic. Matched the tune aesthetic to a T. And so, I don't like that though. Same problem with the hoist. Now, X Transbots matched hoist to a T, but still had some bling bling real world bling bling going on you see the chrome you see all that good stuff but i think that that i i do believe x transbots did the best job but i don't think it looks the best in my opinion so i could take a bit of a stylization to that and so it's kind of like that's why we have all these third parties that look a little bit different so you could get what you want throw it on your shelf and call it a day but the next point number four in the minuses minus number four is the fact that the animation wasn't consistent, it wasn't always good, and I gotta tell you, they, they, they could have done a better job with the animation and made it look more, like that's why people get so inspired about the IDW, because there's so much line work on that stuff. Which to me, I'm so used to the cartoon that I'm brainwashed that I don't really care for IDW, all the extra lines on it. I like, tune smoothness because it's easier and cheaper to animate so they cut those corners so moving from that let's move into the other side which would be the pluses so we want to match matching the tune or hyper tune that the plus so that's the first plus it's it's going to get you that feeling from the cartoon it's gonna hit the sunbow really well it's going to bring those nostalgic feelings back. It's going to make you feel like it walked off the screen. And in the in this the sense essentially this plus is what you always wanted. What it should have been when we were kids. What it should have been from the get-go in my opinion. Because if you just draw it to match the toy exactly, you get Gobots cuz Gobots were drawn to match the toys exactly. Of course, those toys didn't have the same articulation as the cartoon did. I have to admit that. So number two on my plus side, it gives new collectors the opportunity. This is the one that really kind of made me start thinking about, like I had all these negatives and I was actually going to just say all the minuses of the plus line. Uh, then I got Wheeljack and I like it. Uh, there's mixed feelings on that from the community. But then I started thinking about like these new collectors, well, they're either going to buy a KO of the old version or they're going to buy a new plus version and how are they going? They're probably mid, jump in the middle of these releases and picking up some tune, hyper tune stuff so it would fit in better with theirs. So they actually benefit from that. And if uh, old timers don't have to rebuy it. Like there's no law, there's no, there's no mandate that if you want to buy the next new release, you have to have the plus line. You don't have to. So with that, the new collectors benefit the aesthetics. So that's number three is... We have the opportunity to, I guess you say, match the newer figures. And I think the biggest complaint with like, like, like Soundwave not matching up to uh, Megatron and Ironhide in that way, uh, because of we're, we're looking at real world, uh, and then they're giving us this hyper tune. So if you think about it, now we can make, if we really want to, we can make our make it look more uh, aesthetically pleasant. We can make it all more cohesive. 
And I got to say that, um, but one of the things that Fans Toys does really well is they make their figures look both like they walked off the screen and like they have some real world aspect. And uh, Fans Toys is a little funny that way because they go both ways. So you can either have them as on your next to a Hypertune figure or next to a, a realistic figure. And they kind of blend in with both ways, which is pretty impressive with that one. So anyway, there's my three pluses to the plus line. And you heard all my four minuses. So looking into this, let's think about some of this future. And with the future, well, we have the uh, MP Plus, and I'm not actually sure if they call it the MP Plus, but there's a re-release with a repaint of the Shockwave. So, or, yeah, Shockwave. Shockwave is getting a more toy-accurate paint scheme because we already got the cartoon accurate paint scheme, which I felt the lavender was just a little too light, even for the animation models. So looking at that, what else is the future going to bring us? Well, we already know it's going to bring us MP44, and it's going to bring us uh, Bumblebee version 2 now. Two things make people upset. MP44's price, so they bash on the little bit of kibble it's going to have. It has the equal amount of, of gaps, kibble, and, and line work, and well... The same issues that MP36 had. But then people accepted MP36 with open arms. And I think MP44 is going to just trounce every all the competition. And you're going to have nothing but positive reviews on that thing. So Bumblebee's coming. Their Hound looks hyper-tuned also. Uh, which I got to say that Fans Toys Willis and Hound, those are going to be really tough uh, competitors with each other. Past that, people are starting to speculate what else is going to get the plus treatment. The speculation is obviously... Uh, Soundwave could get the plus treatment. And any other figure that they had that that was before, uh, maybe maybe some Dinobots with the plus treatment. But, but that gets into my last point. We're not getting any new molds with these repaints. You don't have to rebuy it. I want you all to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this. What side of the debate are you on? Tidarium, hang around.